skyscraper is our traditional landmarks of New York. But there are other landmarks, like the grimy ribbon of steel now being dismantled that decorates Manhattan's east side. Officially, it was the Third Avenue Elevated Railroad, but New Yorkers just called it the L. For 76 years, L trains clattered by, carrying people to work and home again. But the old steel skeleton outlived its usefulness. Passengers dwindled. And so the L is being torn down. Above Chinatown, Manhattan's last L dappled the street with shadows. Shunning New York's chrome and glitter, it proudly clung to pot-bellied coal stoves for heating its old-fashioned waiting rooms. Colored glass ornamented ancient windows. And passengers paid a station agent who pushed a plunger to unlock a gate to let them in. The wooden train started with tired dignity. Passengers sat and swayed and the track unrolled behind. The route was past miles of tenements, giving the passengers a glimpse into every window. All the tenement dwellers got in return was a feeling of being close to the passing parade. And noise, lots of noise. The cars themselves were 50 years old and almost everybody agreed 3rd Avenue would be better without the L that nearly touched the buildings, obstructed traffic, and blotted out the sun. A ride once cost a nickel. Before electricity came, tiny steam engines hauled the cars, showering red-hot coals on the pedestrians, belching smoke on the housewives' wash. Well, things change, and the L is at the end of the line. This is the last of the 3rd Avenue L, filmed just before its trains rumbled into history. Bound for the scrap heap, the L belongs to the past. In the mountains of brick and steel, it soon will be forgotten amid America's changing scene. Statue of Liberty, known the world over as a symbol of freedom and promise. A gift from the people of France to commemorate their country's close bonds with the colonies during the revolution, America's Lady of Liberty has stood faithful vigil in New York Harbor for nearly 70 years. Building the towering figure and transporting it across the Atlantic was a monumental task. An artist's sketch made in the 1870s reveals how the statue rose over the rooftops of Paris during its construction. The work was supervised by Frederick Auguste Bartholdi, brilliant French sculptor who conceived the idea during a visit to New York. The hand and torch were sent to America in 1876 and shown at the Philadelphia Centennial Exposition marking the 100th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Civil War veterans joined in the patriotic rallies held to raise funds for a pedestal for the statue. In 1885, work began on reassembling the figure, which had been dismantled in France for shipment to the United States in 210 packing cases. The head was completed last. Here, craftsmen working from the inside rivet copper sheeting over the framework of Liberty's 17-foot-high face. By the rocket's red glare, President Cleveland dedicated Miss Liberty in 1886. Today, her torch still throws out its beacon of welcome and hope to all who seek shelter in America. By ferry, more than half a million visitors journey each year to Bedloe's Island, on which the Copper Colossus stands. Countless thousands of youngsters have thrilled to their first glimpse of her. Mounted on a pedestal of concrete and granite, her body fashioned out of metal, she is still every inch a warm, inspiring symbol of man's faith in freedom. Bartholdi's mother was his model for liberty. Working from a nine-foot cast of her in plaster, he computed the dimensions of the proposed statue and constructed it in sections. 
A news magazine cameraman from the torch films the New York City skyline more than half a mile away. 300 feet above the bay, here is a camera eye view of the tiny Bedloes Island, once an army fort with 70 guns and a garrison of 350 men. Visitors can, if they wish, climb inside the statue to the head, which is 10 feet thick and will hold 30 persons. Past Liberty's gallant, ageless lady have come immigrants of all nations. They have found the meaning of the famous sonnet by Emma Lazarus. Mother of exiles, from her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shores. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. <laughs>